Hey, how's it going, everybody? Brad Guitar just here. Uh, the last year or so, I've been taking up the hobby of uh, of fountain pen restoration and collection, and I wanted to show you the fountain pen haul that I got recently at an auction. So here in the city where I live, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, we have an auction house that will current uh, that will always go around and do estate sales and uh, they auction off entire estates. Well, apparently the this particular estate that they just uh, did auction for, the guy, I think the guy must have been either a collector of fountain pens or a uh, prolific user <laughs> and, or res maybe even restorer or hobbyist uh, of fountain pens. Um, it, in any case, uh, these are so just some of the pens that they had for sale and I won a couple of different auctions. This was one auction right here. Uh, for this set of pens, and then this was a separate auction for these, what they called co uh, calligraphy pens. They didn't even really list them, I don't think, as antiques, the best I can recall, but they are. these are actually antique dip pens. And we're going to just take a look at what I got here. Um, and I, but first, I want to show you my existing collection as it stood before this auction, uh, which was fairly modest. I didn't have a whole lot of pens. This is a Waltham that I restored. I did not restore the pencil portion. It's got a mechanical pencil and a, a pen on the other end. This is kind of a daily writer for me and uh, I keep this one full of ink usually. I've got a couple of uh, more modern pens. This is a Jin Hao. Um, it's kind of a Parker 51 copy and uh, I love the way this thing feels and writes. It's really, this is this is a nice pen for no more than you get for these. I think they're like eight bucks or something for one of these, which is a real steal, I think. Uh, I have this more modern Parker. I forget what the name of this one is. It's, um, I don't know, it's a fairly popular model, though. And you can uh, still get these readily. Uh, I have actually, I keep the refills, uh, the refill cartridges from these because I actually uh, will refill these um, with a syringe instead of having to go and buy them all the time. It's way better to do that. Way cheaper. Also did a video on this little thing that I restored. This is a mechanical pencil, actually, so it's not really doesn't fit the bill for what we were taught the subject really at hand. But this uh, is interesting because it has a lighter on one end, and this one is a Havalite, and I think this is all Bakelite. These sections. If you want to see a video of the restoration of this pen, I'll put it up here. Uh, also have a Schaefer Snorkel, uh, which is another daily writer of mine. I keep this in a separate location of the house. Um, where I have a desk and do a lot of work, so I, this is kind of a daily writer. Uh, also, this is a sort of a daily writer as well. This is an Estherbrook uh, that I also restored. If you want to see videos of these, I will also put them up here, um, and you can find the restoration videos on those. Uh, I particularly like the way this Estherbrook writes. Nice little writer. I uh, also have a, another Schaefer here in the base. And this one has a vacuum fill. So if you twist this off, it will. you can actually uh, pull and there's a suction mechanism. Kind of like the, the snorkel that we talked about a minute ago. Um, but I also had this. So this, I had done some research on a while back. And by a while back, I mean probably, you know, a year or two ago. But this is a Leroy W. Uh, it's a Leroy W. Fairchild. New York number two. This is a retractable pen. Right now, the retractable portion does not work. The slider is kind of stuck, but it can be unstuck fairly easily. I think I can just soak it in some uh, fluid and get this unstuck. But you can see here on the side, it's it's marked as a Fairchild on that section. Um, and this is this is gold all through here. And uh, this is actually either, I think this is either, I believe it's ivory. I think the research I did, this thing was about from eight, 1860s or 70s, somewhere in there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead while I'm thinking about it because I know that, that, that the retractable mechanism is kind of stuck. I'm going to go ahead and soak this for a little while and see if I can get that unstuck. Soak it in just some warm water there. So, but that brings me back to... Uh, this selection of pins that I saw. So these four here, uh, you can see here that already that there is one retractable. Um, now they didn't have a whole lot of information on these. They didn't list any of it or any of that kind of stuff. But this one does have uh, a name here. 
This is an Edward Todd and Company. You see it right there, Edward Todd and Company. And again, this is gold. Uh, and it is marked with a number, I believe this one was. Uh, oh, there it is, the number one. I think that's a, that's the size marking. And you can see on the nib, it is also marked. Um, it's also marked Edward Todd and Company, New York, with a number one down there at the bottom. So this pen clearly is from the same uh, era as the one we just looked at, but this one has mother of pearl instead of uh, ivory handle. So this this retraction mechanism does operate. And you can see what what you do is just retract this. Your pen goes in here, and then you can store this away uh, for travel or safe safekeeping. And then when you're ready to write with it, you can just pull it out like so, dip, and then you're ready to write. Um, so this is a nice pen. Um, I think I got I think I got this little auction for these four pieces these four what they were calling just calligraphy pens but I know I knew that this one was a nicer one out of that lot and that one alone is worth easily more than I gave for this lot uh, this one is labeled on the nib a uh, Spencer velvet let's see if I can pull the nib I'll just pull it out for you so you can see this one is a Spencerian excuse me um, velvet point number four 46 and then down here it has uh, uh, England stamped there so that's the nib uh, it doesn't really have anything on here except for I think it had a number and yes it does it has a number six right here and again this then this one's very much larger than uh, the number one for instance you can see see the comparison here this is a number one and this is a number six so that leads me to believe like I said I, I'm pretty sure that that just indicates the size of the uh, sh the shaft the width of the thing like I said it's large and it seems to be in fairly good shape I mean it certainly was used um, but it's got the mother of pearl handle that's all intact so yeah just a looks like a a, a nice pin and then we've got this one. This one is, uh, what is this? This is an Iveson Finney and Company Spencerian pin number one is what's stamped on here. And again, this being a number one, the shafts through here are the same size. That's a number one size. This one's kind of cool because it has the, has a sort of spiral on the handle. Uh, once again, the handle is a pearl. Um, but it does have this carved spiral into it, which is a nice touch. And it has the, the little gold section here. I don't know if that's plated gold. I suspect that's probably just plated gold, but I don't know. It could be, could, could be solid gold. I, I don't know. But there is that one. So there are the, those three. And then we got, finally, we got this. Um, this one is interesting because it has these, has these bumps here in the handle and that's on purpose and it just gives you kind of a better grip on the thing um, this nib is, is probably too large for this it doesn't really fit it very well um, it definitely is too large you can see it kind of kind of flares out where it needs to be a little smaller so that really doesn't fit well in this it will work I mean if you wanted to write with it it could work but uh, it's not going to really the way it sits. This one is also a number two. So this one is the same size as the other, uh, the Fairchild that I already had in my collection. So that's those four, what they called calligraphy pens, but I know to be uh, antique dip pens, probably from, all these are probably from the 1800s, uh, at the very latest, you know, 1910 to 1920, at the very latest would be my guess on all of those but um i'm but more accurately i'd say they're probably you know 18 uh could be anywhere from the 1820s to the uh to the 1890s kind of that time frame so generally victorian era 
Now on to this grouping of pins. There's 10 in total, and there were a few that caught my eye in the listing and made me want to buy this listing. Um, number one is a, uh, a second Esterbrook. And again, I already had this Esterbrook in this color, and uh, I saw that this one was included in the listing. Um, I know exactly how to restore this. It, it's not difficult to restore these um, lever-style pins. Really, there's, there's a sack inside and uh, you just basically pull this section and you change out the sack clean it really well put it all back together and usually got a working pin within within a matter of you know a few minutes um, so I suspect that this one's going to be fairly easy to restore uh, I didn't really get a good look at the condition because I didn't have a whole lot of pictures but just looking at the condition um, it's got a little bit of what I thought might have been shoe marks here, but it's not actually. It looks like it's just, I don't know, some gunk or something that I can sort of just scrape off. So whatever it is, it's, it may be dried ink or something or glue. Um, the Both of the jewels, it's a double jewel. So both of the jewels on the ends are, are completely intact. This one I couldn't say the same for. It has a chip on, the, on both jewels actually. Uh, you can get a replacement on eBay for one of these jewels. I think this smaller one, uh, but you cannot find this one right now. Maybe somebody will start reproducing them, but I, I couldn't. I was looking. I was going to replace those both, but I could only find the one. I thought, well, if I find the one, it's not going to matter anyways. It's not never going to be a perfect pin if I can't find the other one too. So I didn't bother with it, and I just use this as a daily rider. So it's not like a collector's item or anything like that. And these aren't anyway. They're not going to bring a lot of money by themselves, but... You know, in a lot, they kind of do enhance the attractiveness of a lot such as this. But you can see, uh, you can see kind of the iridescence of the of these Esterbrook pins, and you can also hopefully make out the Esterbrook name right there. And you see, made in the USA, Esterbrook right there. I'm not going to try to force it, but it is definitely stuck. The sack is certainly uh, crusted up, I'm sure. What is the nib on this? Let's put it under the microscope. It says 1555 Greg. Okay, so that nib is a 1555. My other nib, I think, is larger. So my old one is a 9550, and this one is a 1555. So you can see the difference in size there, this one being the larger of the two. But again, that's probably going to be a fairly easy one to restore. And actually, let me see if I can even, might even be able to get it apart right now. I cannot. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drop it in the warm water as well and just let it soak for a little while. And we'll come back to it later on and see what kind of progress gets made there, if any. All right, next in line, I've got this little keystone. So this one's got some shape to it you can see it's kind of almost like a i don't know if it's an octagon but five six seven eight nine ten so it's a decagon uh very um very crusty condition uh we've got the levers just kind of flopping which leads me to believe that possibly the lever mechanism is going to need some major work and this one will restore in much the same way as the Esterbrook. What I like about these Esterbrooks is they have a really nice girth to them. They're about the right size for my hand, it seems. Um, they feel nice in the hand. And uh, they're not too small and not too large, put it that way. And they have a nice balance. So these are good. The, to me, these are a really nice feeling pen. This one is uh, very similar in size and girth and everything to the Esterbrook which should make it a good rider once once it gets fully restored. But like I said, right now it won't even come apart. And it has some very, very crusty appearance here on the nib. So I'm not sure what that says. It's hard for me to read it here. What does it say? Supreme, maybe? And then a number eight. But you can see how kind of crusty that is. Definitely needs cleaning. But it is uh, gold plated, and you can see it's probably plated because we got a little bit of the plating starting to wear off, I think, in places. But this one, like I said, could also make for a nice little um, daily rider 
once we get it restored. So I'm going to drop that one down in the water as well and see what we can get loosened up there. The cool thing about this one's got a really cool cap on it. You can see right there, Keystone. And it's got this little band right here, which again, looks like it, it might be gold plated. I think it's probably gold plated. And then next up, we've got this thing. And I think this one might be a little bit of a mutt because I had it, I opened it earlier and it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be the case that the, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this cap belongs to this base or not. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, it does. I'm trying to match the lever with the cap color and just, I don't know. It's a little bit hard to tell. This looks like maybe something that uh, the guy just kind of threw together or maybe the people at the auction just kind of put this cap on this pin to have a cap on the pin. You know, that's possible. But this one says Velvet Point. Uh, it has a number six. Uh, it says right here on the lever, it says made in the USA. You can see that. Yeah, it's pretty easy to see. Um, this one was already kind of coming apart. Um, and you can see it's fairly rubbery. So it looks like maybe someone restored this somewhat recently. Um, but it does have a break here. And it does have, if you'll listen got some crusty ink inside there and it's got a break here too so you know the sack obviously has seen better days and is going to need a restoration but this section um i don't know it doesn't really seem like well for one thing the sack is too long so when you try to put it in here it's butting up against the back of the the fill mechanism it doesn't go all the way in so um i think the person who replaced the sack in this I think they put too long of a sack. They should have cut it down just a little bit before they put that much sack in there because you can see right here I'm pushing in and then it's kind of pushing right back out right there. So the sack is too long. This cap possibly does not belong with this because if you if you see here it just well first of all it just goes it seems to go down way too far. I would have thought the cap would stop right there. Um, it could also be the case that the that there's something missing from inside the cap, that there would have been a, a, something, I don't know, could have been that there was something there to stop it at this point, and it's not doing that. I, I honestly don't know. I mean, you could write with the thing, but I just don't know if that belongs with that. So maybe somebody can tell me in the comments if you know for sure whether that belongs with it. But this is a, um, this is a Windsor cap. So if you know what pin that this cap belongs to, if it's not this one, uh, maybe link, link it down in the comments or let me know down in the comments. I would kind of like to know. Um, moving along, we've got this one. This one is inscribed. It's definitely a complete pin, but I just don't know what it is exactly. So we've got definitely uh, you know, busted up sack. We're going to need a new um, ink sack which is pretty much a given. The cool thing about this is it has the hooded nib, much like a Parker, kind of like a Parker 51 there. It's got that hooded nib look. And this was something that they came out with, uh, what, along the mid to late 40s, something like that, I think, Parker did. Maybe it was the late 40s when they came out with the ones like this, with the hoods. Um, but this would be a fairly easy restore overall as long as the mechanism is fully intact in there and sometimes they're not it looks like this one is yeah this has got the full mechanism can you see it in there yeah you can see it so it's all there and intact so no problems there and this ought to be a really nice rider it's got a great feel to it um it's got a nice I think even when it's full of ink, it's this has got a nice balance, and it looks like he used it a lot. This is probably one of his favorite pens because you can see all the wear that's on that cap right there, um, and the fact that it has his name inscribed and everything. I would say this was probably one of his favorites. Let me put that piece back on. 
that goes there. Yeah, that's that'll be a nice pin once we get um, this all polished up. Hopefully, that will polish up nicely. Um, and if it doesn't, we may end up having to replate this. But that that could be that could be our first foray into um, electroplating to replate this part. I will have to take this whole. I'll have to take all of this off. Um, and then electroplate this. So that could be an interesting video if we get around to making a video of that one. Th now on to this one. This is one of the ones that convinced me to buy this lot because I just like this pin. This is a Waterman's... Uh, this is a an ideal model. I think it's a 52.5V is the model numbers on these. You can see right there Waterman's and you can see the, uh, the patent patent office you see ideal right there written uh, there's the registry fountain pen I think this thing is made of like a hard rubber and you see Waterman's again down here same thing registered patent office made in the USA and then it's got this really neat um, inscribed uh, pattern and then it's got ideal also written right there on the the fill lever with the little globe on it the fill lever it's okay that's that's pretty difficult to lift so i'm assuming that we've got a really hard sack in here um and then for the nib all right for the nib on this one we see uh waterman's ideal uh, registered in the U.S. Patent Office. Uh, is that all it says? I guess that's all that says. So it doesn't give me any numbers or anything. It just, uh, again, reminds us that the patent is registered. Some people are uh, say when you research these online or you see uh, any discussions about this particular pen model that, that these were used a lot by women because they're smaller for one thing, it's it's much smaller actually than some of these other ones. I mean, just give you an example. I mean, look at the difference in size from that one right there, you know, or just like a Schaefer, even a Schaefer snorkel, which is sm a smaller pin. You can see how much longer a Schaefer snorkel is than this thing. This is a small pin, and it's got this little um, this little ring up here that you can put on a chain and a gentleman can wear this kind of uh with a chain on his on his vest if he has a vest uh, much the same way he would do if he had a pocket watch or something like that he could put this on a chain uh, and women could wear these around their necks as on a on a chain or a ribbon or whatever and uh, then they would ha always have a pin you know at the ready but just a really cool, and I love the way this thing feels in the hand. It's just got this, the, because it's so small, um, this way, it kind of doesn't get in the way. And it's just a really nice feeling thing. And I, I think by the time I get this one restored, this may become one of my daily riders. I'm not quite sure yet exactly how to open this one. I presume it's probably going to be the same way that all of these do, but I want to make sure before I go yanking on it. But I may drop this one down in the water too here in just a second. But I just noticed this on the end of the pen, 52 and a half V. But definitely one of the cooler pens of the lot and one of the reasons that I ended up buying this lot. We'll drop that one down with the rest of them. Next up in our big lot here, we've got this one. This is a uh, this is an uh, EverSharp, but this one is a ballpoint, um, which is kind of interesting. This is the only ballpoint in this lot, and this is probably an early example of a ballpoint. I would have to say this probably probably uh, I don't know exactly when the ballpoint came in, but I think it was early '50s. I, if I had to guess, I would say this is an early '50s um, EverSharp. And here is the ballpoint refill, and I think this has the button in the back, and I think you're you're supposed to be able to retract this. Let me make let me see if that mechanism even works. Is it gonna? It that mechanism may need some may need some attention to work properly. 
but you can see right here it's supposed to retract and it isn't so we're gonna need to do some work on that let's see so I wonder what I'm missing here Okay, I'm thinking that this is supposed to go in and then um, maybe turn. Looks like maybe it's missing a part. Uh, hard to say. Hard to say. I wonder also if you can even still get refills for this. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this is, this is unobtainium at this point. This, this little uh, ballpoint refill. So even if I do get the mechanism working, I mean, it's kind of possible that I won't be able to use this pin anyway, regardless. Let me try again to see if I can get this thing working. Well, it goes down. goes down and I can push it back up but it's not wanting to click like it's supposed to hmm I'm just wondering if it's maybe a matter of just this being turned the wrong way it could be something really that simple now once again in that position it just kind of goes down let's see let me try one more time let me try one more time. And if this doesn't work out, I'm probably going to have to do some research on how this is supposed to go together. It could just be a matter also of uh, lubrication or something like that. Oh, okay. I see that ring is part of that mechanism. Okay. Interesting. It, it has to go this way. It almost has to. Ah, it retracts with this. Oh, interesting. Okay. I got it. I got you. So this, if you want to retract it, you use this lever. You push this down. Let's try that again. Oh, yeah. this. I think this thing could probably also be restored pretty well. Um, it could be polished up and everything, it looks like. Okay, so here's how it works. This this clicks down in the down position, right? And then you push this to retract it. That's ingenious. You can see it again. So you push this to go down, and then you push this in to retract. Very cool. An ever sharp ballpoint. I'm gonna have to get that one working. That's gonna be a fun one. Okay, so here was one of the main reasons I bought this lot. Um, well, first of all, because it was a lot of cool pins that we could uh, kind of make videos about and do some restorations on. And I've got a bunch of uh, sacks, you know, anyway, some spares. And uh, we'll just might as well put those to use in some different pins. But this Parker right here, this is a Parker 45, and it's a vintage one. And uh, I saw it in the listing. They did not even, they didn't even mention it in the blurb about this particular auction they didn't even mention that it had a Parker um, 45 in it but that's exactly what we've got here this is a mop this is a Parker model 45 and these um, have a vacuum filling mechanism there's a sack in here, and it feels like maybe it's got a little bit of pliability on the sack. You know what I'm going to do? Before I go to town on this, I'm going to try re recovering this. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop that down inside of there. Let's see if we can't get that. I'm going to go ahead and drop both of those sections in there. Drop that one too, might as well. But that could be cool with the vacuum fill mechanism on that old uh, vintage 45. And just that vintage 45 alone is worth, 
easily more than I paid for that entire lot. Yeah, I already made out pretty well on it. This one is a universal model. Nice pin. It's got some good heft to it. Um, it's got, you know, good weight in the hand. Again, I don't know if you could read that on there, but it says, does say universal. And it says USA at the top there. Um, it is a press fit. And excuse me, I was wrong about only having one ballpoint pin out of this lot because this one also is a ballpoint. I believe it's a ball. No, it's not. Excuse me. No, it's not. Or is it? Oh, yeah, that's right. This one is a ballpoint. Okay. This one's interesting because it's a ballpoint that has a refill sack. And the neat thing about this one is that obviously someone has already been here to restore this because this sack is completely pliable and probably usable. I do feel a mechanism inside of here. So I don't know how this is going to be refilled. I have to do some research on this one. This one is a universal buck ball and then it says ball o What does that say? Core New York? C-O-R-R, -R, New York, USA. Or uh, Ballomatic Corporation, excuse me. Ballomatic Corp, Corporation, New York, USA. Buckball, Universal. That right there is a pretty interesting pin. And I'm looking forward to getting this one going. And I, like I said, the sack is already good. So I'll just have, all I got to do really is learn how to refill this one. I don't know how the fill mechanism is going to work on this. How would it work? Does this turn maybe or I just don't know. I'm going to have to do some research definitely on this one because it's um that's nothing to do with that. I wonder if I'm just supposed to this probably all I'm supposed to do is is dip this Dip this in ink. And does it, does the ball push in? I'm thinking probably what I do is dip this in ink and then just squeeze this mechanically. I mean, that's my guess but I really have no idea. Okay, we're getting down to the last couple here. We've got another John B. Gunn. So the fact that we have two, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think this whole lot was probably John B. Gunn's lot. This one is a penman, and it's a, it's a lever fill. And it's got a really tiny nib. Look at that tiny nib on that. Really tiny. Let me see if we can get the section loose. Probably going to have to soak that one to get it loose. I'm guessing. And we'll see what markings it has on the nib, if any. It does look like it's probably gold, but no markings. And the, but the nib itself looks like it's in excellent condition. So this would probably be a really good writer. So a penman. It lines up pretty well with uh, right here when you close it, and it takes one uh, just over one turns to get it open this is probably going to be a pretty decent little pin here it's a it's a single jewel and like I said just uh, good heft on this one as well kind of like that universal ballpoint it's, this one's got some decent weight to it So cool pin there, um, and then finally, this is the last one of the lot, and it's uh, it's interesting because this is a this is a dual pen mechanical pencil slash fountain pen. 
what is this one? This one is a Welsh, uh, Welsh manufacturing company. Stainless. Uh, Prov, so probably Providence, Rhode Island. It's kind of worn off in the, or it didn't stamp very well, did it? From the factory, that I guess the stamp kind of messed up on the the I and the D there. Oh, but they're there. I just you can barely see it. Providence, Rhode Island. Okay, and this one actually has an inscription on it, and it's the inscription is kind of neat. I'm gonna have to look this up. It's inscribed Miles Silk Shop, and let's see if we can get this one apart. We may uh, go ahead and soak this one as well. Yeah, this one will come apart, I believe. Uh, this one's acting like it might actually. This one's acting like it might actually be ready to fill. Let's see. It is twisting, so let's see what happens. No, it's not. No, it's not ready to go. It needs uh needs a sack like the rest of these, and boy, does it need a clean. Woof, that one's pretty bad. Um, I've got a lot of pins already, sections and stuff already in there, so I'm not going to mix this one in with them. But yeah, that one will also make a really cool restoration because again, it has the mechanical pencil on one end. Um, also, it's kind of compact as well. Uh, but that'll make the second pencil slash fountain pen in one that I have. Oh yeah, one more little postscript to this video. I was able to get the Fairchild retractable loose where it does work now as it's supposed to. Uh, not because I soaked it in the water. It was still seized up uh, after taking it out of the water. But I sprayed the whole mechanism with some good old WD-40 and let it sit for a couple seconds. And now it's working like a charm. But this is definitely the oldest pen in my collection, unless I discover that one of these pens is older. Uh, this is a good candidate also for possibly the oldest pen. And it's, you know, for, like I said, from around the same time period. So these will be interesting to uh, research for sure.